Dude, you picked a nasty piece. Conjunction Junction. Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> How am I looking? Is that better? Is that movie better? It's geometry. Geometry. And physics. I enjoyed geometry. I don't remember physics very well. Here we pop that top on. All right. There you go. Justin, you can pop that top. Sure. Um... <laughs> Here we go. Justin, can you mix Is me up? Is that like the life alert? It's to sync up the audio yeah. with the video. Oh. So when you see you doing something and then you see a mark on the audio, so you line them up. Audio spikes. Audio or spikes. No, I'm thinking of uh, clap on, clap off. like The, the clapper? Right? And yeah. Your lights on oh, there. yeah. Clap on, clap off. The clapper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's way back. Yeah, you're dating all of us. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't or feel the old where... until right now. <laughs> There was one where old people, uh, well, just people in general that didn't have maybe good balance, right? You talking about the uh, what is it, life alert or whatever yeah. it is? Yeah, that I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best they, they, one. Dude. You, I don't think you had to clap. I've it was just fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, it they just a little deal. Academy Award. It was just a little deal that you had to. Yeah, you like push a, a bracelet or a necklace yeah. or something that you wore. It was a necklace. What, wasn't that called Life Alert? Mm -mm. Yeah. What was that? Yeah, I think it was, dude. No, no, it's something different. Life Alert is, or no, that's Life Flight. That's Life Flight. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure thing. it's called Life Alert. It's dude. Life Alert. Yeah. I'm pretty sure my dusty old brain is remembering that correctly. Yeah. For sure. Can Can you mix me up a beat, Justin? A beat? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For a rap song? You look, you look like the kind of guy who could bust up beat in the back uh, of the day. No. I've heard what you listen to before the store opens. Yeah. <laughs> thugs and Bone or whatever. What thugs and Bone, yeah. Thugs and bone, bone Thugs and Harmony. He doesn't know what Thugs and Harmony is. <laughs> thuggish, <laughs> thuggish, Thuggish Bone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> First time I walked in the building, I'm like, what the fuck are we listening to in here? Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea. Diverse. You don't uh, know Bone Thugs, Justin? Uh, no, Josh? I did not. I did, uh, Justin enlightened me, but it took a yeah. little while. Yeah. Damn. It's a little catchy. That's from your era. That's 90s too. gold. Dude. I know, but, era, not, but that's yeah. not. Well, yeah, we're not that far apart. No. Um, but I don't. Uh, I didn't listen to any of that, oh. like at all. Like I, that was my older age. You listen to that angry metal, whatever. I was a alternative rock and roll boy <laughs> through and through, man. No, yeah. yeah, like I was very mad. And now you're all grown up, and look at your hair. And I still love alternative <laughs> rock, man. It's just, it's my thing. Pearl Jam, and yeah. Pearl Audio Jam, Slave. Stone Temple Pilots, Alice in Chains. Uh, well, it's in, it's whatever music I typically put in my Instagram. Yeah. I don't really care what's popular. I care what I like. No. And, you know, get why don't you in, Why don't you intro Justin? Well, my firstborn son, Justin Grimes, <laughs> go with that. Um, Justin has worked for me and quit on me three different times. No, he's quit on me twice, but he's worked for me three times. Am I doing that right? Uh, so when I... Mm, so I went to Alaska in 2012. Yeah. Yeah, 2012. How many years had you worked for me before that? Uh, three, three, yeah, three. About three. Yep. Yeah. And then. But why? Why were you going to Alaska? Uh, I wanted to get my um, assistant guide license mm -hmm. um, for guiding in Alaska, and I just got uh, I got set up with the wrong outfitter up there. I won't name names, but yeah, um, I decided to cut my losses, and thankfully, your dad and you. Allowed me to come back. It was a flat, terrible experience for you, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't great. Um, but I learned some things about myself that um, that were good. Yeah. So, yeah. Gotcha. It was a good experience. And then you came back, and that was from... You were, you were only gone, like... Yeah, like... Three months, or... No, not, a little more than months? that. Yeah, six more months. Um, and then, yeah, I came back, and then I worked for you until... 20 so let's see christy and i got married in 2017 so um yeah till 2017 mm -hmm. so another four years and then yeah moved to um genesee mm -hmm. and then um 
yeah, just came back here and took over for Forest. Yep. Um, in October. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. 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 Basically, Justin is the guy that as soon as Josh leaves the shop, Justin and I talk shit about Josh. <laughs> Oh, that's not true. <laughs> we roast that's Josh as soon as he leaves the show. Oh, man, yeah. We let it air out. Yeah. No, Remember, Justin, I don't give a fuck what people think. So yeah, no. Doesn't bother me at all. No. Uh, Justin is the guy that uh, manages the shop, right? And Justin manages the pro shop, and Doug manages the online business. Yeah. So the people that come in and get their bow set up here and buy stuff, they... They see Justin or one of the people. His smiling face is probably yeah. the first one you'll see yeah. when you walk in the door. Yeah, and Justin is uh, very uh, kind and accepting of all my like, you know, little nuggets of archery wisdom that I need. And your quirks too. Don't. And my about quirks, quirks. Yeah, I got a few of those. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, it's been cool to watch the progression of this business. And since Justin's been here, it's been like things have been pretty smooth from my observation. Yeah. That's from the outside looking in, so whatever that means. But I'd, I, I'd say that's in part to that I had some experience doing that before. And I I was running a pro shop in, in Idaho before I came back. So I never really had like a Break. like a big hiatus from yeah. from doing that. Basically, um, but can, I'm yeah, I'm one of like many people that have kind of held that position for Josh. Um, yeah. He's had Ryan Gable, Ryan Gable, Forrest, Forrest um, um, Brian a little bit, Brian probably a little bit. So yeah, angry Brian. Yeah, angry <laughs> Brian. Not, Brian didn't. Brian was not happy at that time in his life. Um, Brian's just Brian's Brian, and you know that. Yeah, but he's a lot different now than he was. He's yeah. still he's yeah. he's he, he, he's a different guy. Yeah, yeah. And in, in a much better, in a much more positive way, which he was always a positive person, but sure. he just. He was waiting for life to happen, and it wasn't like life was happening, and it was irritable, it seemed like, for him. Yeah. Towards the end. Basically, yeah. you've been in the Who game else? a while. Uh, Grant yeah, Hughes. Yeah, for sure. I had Grant Hughes. He was the first one. Grant, yeah. Yeah. He'd but be, this is, if you want somebody that's entertaining, unlike myself. Grant is fair. Oh, you're uh, very. You are so mistaken. You are so mistaken. Grant would be, be the person to have on this. Grant, oh, sure. no. I'll, I'll have him on one of these days. Grant, He's very Buckham. entertaining. He's got quite a quite a life history too. I mean, he worked for me for a while. Yeah, he went and ran a shop in Australia for a long period mm -hmm. of time. Yeah, Abby um, Archery was the uh, general manager of Trophy Taker up until yeah. it uh, closed, sold. and then or sold, Dan sold, the sold, and then ran to option, yeah. and now he's uh, working in Seattle. He's yep. got quite an interesting, interesting history and many a story, like you know, yeah. shooting him with the paintball awesome, gun. Awesome stories. Yeah. Yeah, Grant uh, sounds cool. And uh, we'll we'll get Grant and we'll get Anthony too. We'll have like just about every per boy who ever worked for me for an extended period of time. <laughs> yeah, at one point or another, because we've always got funny stories yeah. and history and whatnot. But um, ours was very unique, and that um, it was uh, out of all the transitions that I've had. Yeah. Um, you know, this one was uh, well, this was by far the smoothest. Um, but you know, you had experience. You knew this. You knew us. You knew what we do. You knew how we do sure. things. So it was bound to be. But it was a very um, it was smoother than I expected, even though I expected it to be smooth. So that was really great. Um, I yeah. uh, I figured I'd have a longer period of time where I couldn't like step away for yeah periods, yeah. and uh, I, I don't like no. Call me if you got a problem. Yeah, <laughs> got, for better I, or busy. worse, I've made this my career. So <laughs> let's, I kind of have to. For better. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of have to commit to it. I'm pot committed at this point, just with my age. Um, yeah. So. Well, there's definitely worse things to do with your life, I promise. Yeah, and it helps fuel what I love to do, right? Yeah, I think if you were going to burn out, you'd have done it already. Yeah. You've been doing this a really long time, and you I still have... My have... Like, I have my times where I'm burnt out. Well, but that's... Uh, I think you do, the... too. Oh, um, any more, no. I like. I just need a break from people at, at times. <laughs> I don't get that break, <laughs> I'm constantly well, with them. Yeah. Well, no, you got weekends. No, no. What I mean is dealing with people. Oh, in general, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I I like to think as I got older, I got way more patient with it. You are um, like way more agree. patient. Yeah. Um, but I, I the the po most positive thing I have going for me at this point is everyone knows me, and they know how busy I am, so they don't expect me to stop and give them a ton of attention. Most of most of the people are really good about. Hey, I just want to say thank you for what you do. Yeah. Or, Hey, I just I want you to know this stuff helped me a lot. Um, can you answer a question real quick yeah. about this? That kind of thing. But 
But I also run around that place like a chicken with my head cut you off. Do. So I, I'm always hauling. So it's yeah. kind of obvious. I'm, yeah. I, and I'm, I'm busy. So people yeah. are usually pretty good. You make it that. apparent for sure. I don't do it on purpose. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's, I'm, yeah. I, I'm trying to squeeze in four people's jobs under one roof, you know. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, that, that can wear you out. Yeah. Like I, the last weekend at the property was huge. Oh, bet. I got just like, and I, I worked the whole time. I was running an excavator till from like just after the sun came up till the sun was going down. Yep. And, you know, start a campfire, do some cooking, eat, go to bed, you know. But I wasn't dealing with people. And I literally, I, I don't normally do this, but I like just ignored my phone, like completely. Like I'm not even looking at it. I don't yep. care. Um, so that's, that, that's more necessary than I realize. And I, I need to do a better job of that. But, and you need to have a better structure of you're going from here to here. You're out of here. Just walk out of the building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, not me though. <laughs> I know. I know. But, but with what we've got coming and the amount of people we got, coming, oh, I that's going to get a lot better. Pipe, yeah. It's going to get a lot better. And I'm going to, if you don't do it, I'm going to make you do it. You need to go shoot your bow every day. Oh, I make time to shoot my bow every day. I yeah. mean, like in the middle of the work day. Uh, I think you do. Yeah, I think you'd be a happier person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably. Justin's like, I like to shoot my bow. <laughs> I like bows. Got to play with bows. Yeah. But um, <laughs> what about this podcast? Are we gonna like? Is are we gonna exit or is it gonna be a thing? I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a thing at this point. I would say it's a thing. I think it's a thing. I think it's a thing. Like our tips are pretty close to touching. Did we kind de- of thing? did we decide on a on an actual official? We were talking about earlier today. Yeah. Did, did, yeah. Do we settle? What did yeah. you settle on? I think I told you you could pick. I didn't care. Yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna make a individual YouTube channel for this podcast. We'll figure the name out. It'll be something with our names and fireside chat. It'll be linked right below in the description. So all the details will be there. It'll go out to all the audio platforms for the people that want to listen to it on Spotify or Apple or whatever. But the thing to do to unlock the first episode on that channel. Mm-hmm. Tell them about it. Um, you got to you got to subscribe. Five thousand of you. Period. Yeah, get it simple. To, get it to five thousand. Get it to five thousand, and it'll unlock it. And we'll yeah. turn on the next video. It'll be it'll be in the hopper, and literally, it'll just hit, hit publish as soon as it hits five thousand subscribers. Yeah. So that's not a big ask, guys. I mean, the lot, the first video has got like twelve thousand views. If less than half of you subscribe, we're golden. Josh has 30,000 subscribers. 32,000 today. As of today. And you're yeah. at, yay. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Cheersies. Cheersies. Yay. And um, uh, Timmy's up to 11-something yeah, already. It's in, growing. What, a month? Yeah. A month, yeah. yeah. That's the fastest growth I've ever heard of. But, you know. It's been cool. It's, it's, Thank you, guys. It's neat to have the excitement. And then, but um, now Josh and I will have this little place for this thing to live and help us yeah. get to 5,000. It means it means a lot. You know, that's yeah. that little snowball that we want to get rolling. Of course. And then we'll uh, commit to doing one a week. Yeah, right? one a week. One a week. Cool for, guys like Justin. Yeah. Justin. maybe busy, busy. Yeah. Maybe we'll just run Justin back every yeah, week. Yeah, we'll just bring you back every time. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> we'll just keep bringing Justin back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I so, can... You know, I I don't think I've ever also asked you, and it's the same thing I didn't ask you, which is weird. I never asked you, why did you get into archery originally? Why? Yeah, I don't think I ever asked you that. Just like uh, I, ne- I I asked him that in like the first one or the second one. I'm like, I've never actually asked him yeah. how he got into yeah. archery. Were you like a young polywog or how uh, old you? Well, yeah, my dad introduced me to it when I was really young. Like, um, oh, what was that shop? There's Tom's, this... Tom's Custom Archery. Mm, no, no, it's where the big five is. Tom's. That was Tom's? Yeah, Tom's High Country or Tom's Custom Archery. The, the depending Elk on the front that got shot with an arrow? Yeah, yeah. So that originally it was called <laughs> oh, no. Tom's uh, High Country. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and he was the High Country dealer. Yeah. And then when High Country wasn't nearly as popular, he just told, called it Tom's Custom Archery. Yeah. And I, I think he specialized in Hoyt at that point. But yeah, yeah. it was Tom Price. And um, his uh, he's still around. Really? Yeah, I saw him a year or two ago. He brought in a bunch of... Old oh, crap old that arrows. was in his garage. Yeah. 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 And he was like, hey, do you have a use for any of this stuff? It was really nice. You yeah. know, we uh we were were competitors and not on good terms then, but he was he was right. really nice. And his son, Tom Price Jr., I've talked to a lot yeah. um over over time, but I haven't seen him in a while. I know yeah. he was managing uh at <clears throat> downtown Toyota, and I think he uh I want to say he got into real estate. Gotcha. He's just a real estate agent now. But. Gotcha. But yeah, that's where you went first. Yeah, so th- yeah, my dad went there. Um, I remember going there yeah. with him 
uh, to shoot because they had an indoor shooting, indoor shooting so, range. Yep. yep. So we would go there, um, and I would shoot. I had a bear longbow. I think everybody had them. Mm -hmm. uh, ambidextrous, you know. Yeah. Like fiberglass. Green, though. yeah, a green fiberglass right. bow with a red oh, yeah. handle on it. I think that was probably the first thing I ever and, had too. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I, I shot that when I was young, but I never got into archery until I was in my very early 20s. Mm -hmm. So a good friend of mine, um, Jared Harwood, invited yeah. me to go sit a whitetail tree stand that he had. Yeah. And I um, got to watch him just stroke a luck that his target buck happened to come by the tree stand that night. And uh -huh. I watched him shoot it, and I was like, "Whoa! I can get, <laughs> I do I can get behind this. <laughs> this is this is sweet." Yeah. Um, so I immediately, I remember, I immediately came to um, the shop because um, I lived, you know, at the time I lived five minutes from here. You know, might even be less than that. Yeah, probably less than that, depending yeah. on how you drive. And yeah. uh, I bought a brand new Hoyt with. Alpha I had, Max 32. Yep. yep. And um, which we can circle back to that actually. Um, mm -hmm. But I bought an Alpha Max 32 with a um, Achieve Armatech HD uh, five pin, a trophy taker trophy takers, site. So, trophy taker rest. Or, yes, yeah. rest. Yeah, sorry. You had an original trophy taker. Um, and then. I had a six arrow two piece, two piece fuse quiver fuse, yep. <laughs> with an offset yep. bracket that yep. we still sell. Yep. Um, a podium stabilizer, which at the time was just your stabilizer, didn't have a name yeah. behind it. Yeah. And um, I ended up selling that bow to um, a good friend of mine at the time that mm -hmm. I was uh, living with, Brian Atkinson. Mm -hmm. yep. I sold it to his dad. And mm -hmm. um, his dad, Josh knows this, but um, his dad happened to pass yeah. last Tuesday. Yeah. And um, Brian, because we had talked about it, actually, um, I was like, dude, if your dad is ever going to sell that bow, I would buy it back from him. Like, I, I guarantee he doesn't shoot it. I know Dave yeah. just got it like in. He just got it in the garage in somewhere. A, yeah, in a corner yeah. somewhere. And yeah. um, Brian came by my house last um this last weekend mm -hmm. and um and and gave me that bow so it 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 means a lot in a lot of different ways but sure. that that bow is um my first bow is back in my hand so that's, that's wild it's, it's it's pretty nuts yeah. um unfortunate circumstances right um one of my best friends losing his dad um, suddenly and unexpectedly yeah, too i very, remember i got that very very got hard that message and it's like what very hard, but it was it, it was eerily uh, similar to mine. Yeah, it just yeah, in a lot of ways. No way knowing it was going to happen, and just boom. Yep. So he was yeah. younger though. He uh, when I talk about the the nine years that I shouldn't have gotten, he didn't get those. Yep. That's really unfortunate. Yep. Um, but he was a big role in Brian's life. Um, yeah. Um, a huge role model and and somebody that Brian could always lean on. Um, and he he's just a good per person in general. But um, it's just it's just strange that Brian would have thought of me in that moment and and given the bow back to me. So I'm very. Uh, I don't think that's strange at all. Uh, uh, not strange. Maybe weird. Maybe my, you know, there's probably a synonym for the word I'm using <laughs> that <laughs> makes more sense, right? But um, <clears throat> it's it's um, kind of bittersweet. So yeah. this is the best well, best phrase for it. So, yeah, we don't, um, none of us get to choose. Nope. You know, and it should just be another great reminder of living for every moment and yeah. spending the time with the ones that you love as often 100%. as you can because you never know when they're going to be gone. Yeah. And it was a reminder. And I talked to you that, uh, that same week. Um, I don't know if you kind of drew we, a, a parallel between me letting you know how much you and your family have meant to yeah. me. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, directly correlated yeah. to that. Just, yeah, well, I mean, we, now you think about it, all three of us have lost our yep. dads su suddenly. Yeah, yeah, my dad died in, in high yeah. school, um, just colon cancer. My dad was a completely healthy person, but yeah. Yeah, just fluke deal. You never know. So. You never know, and it, um, I think it 
makes you value certain things differently and makes you take different paths in your life sure. because you realize the value of the time. Yeah. For sure. Yep. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's where I got started. Um, mm -hmm. That's the first book I bought. And it took me a while to figure it out. I felt like uh, I had a good grasp on it initially, and um, I did not. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it took me a while, and, and I killed my um, first year sometime after that. Um, How long after you bought that boat did you start working for me? It wasn't very long. No, so. not very long at all. I, yeah. I reached out to Buckingham, and I was like, man, yeah. I need... I need to get in doing something there. Yeah. And I started as uh, just kind of working you started out remote as a, remote you, before remote was a thing, right? Yeah, before yeah. all this COVID yeah. stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I had Fletch Arrows at home. And I get paid by the dozen. You started out as the arrow bitch. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that where I think I've done just about that's, everything. That's supposed to be where everybody starts. Yeah. We don't uh, we don't have that as much anymore as we used to because we have so many pre-fledged yeah. in the building and we're really trying to get people to build their own. 100%. Because it's not that hard to do. It's, no, it's, it's not. silly to not do it, but uh but yeah, that that was the role you'd put somebody in for the first 30 to 60 days and see if you could get them to quit. Yeah, I'd do it for a lifetime. Yeah, I, I mean, love some it. people you yeah, still like it. Yeah. It's mind numbing. You just sit oh, there. Yeah. And, yeah, a lot of people like it. And that was it, with man. the bits and burger not like, yeah. you know, yeah, not the no. quick jigs that Yeah. Not the, these fancy quick jigs we got now. Yeah, fancy, <laughs> fancy, <laughs> fancy, fancy. Yeah. That's a that's a so a, a, a touchy subject with old Justin right there. He hates that thing with a passion. I, yeah, I don't think it's the most. Um, I think it does its job well. It puts maximum helical. Yeah, oh, well, you can't. Uh, there, there isn't anything out there that does that yet. And quickly, yeah, and quickly, yeah, yeah. But there's inconsistencies yeah. in how it works, and yeah. What not? And I, I understand where your gripes come from. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, if you if you believe in the helical, you're kind of stuck with that. If you want a lot, that's, sure. it's hard to get anything else to do what yeah. that will do in that regard. For somebody that hasn't, and I have to always take a step back from, I guess, my abilities and my knowledge and what I can do, mm -hmm. and assuming that the customer has that same ability. Um, go, ah, yeah. this easy jig is probably. That's the skill. Probably the best thing. I spent yeah. probably 15 minutes explaining setting up a Bits and Burger today. Yeah, uh, and he's going to be back with that same tool and asking you to go over it again, too. Potentially. No, potentially. He will. <laughs> I guarantee it. I guarantee it. It's just the the more complicated a tool is, the more frequently people need help. Sure. And that's the, that's the skill that I, I think our progressions have been very similar over time. And... It took me 10 to 12 years or 14 years to like revert my brain back a little bit because like you you have this knowledge and you understand how things work and you're thinking at a higher level all the time and you forget what like the basic stuff is. Even now when I'm like thinking of YouTube video ideas, I think of a really like a really like the most basic thing I can think of and it's like would be one of the most popular videos you would make because you forget sure. that this is something you learned so long ago that seems like commonplace. Yeah. Right, and as you progress farther and farther down the road, it's like your brain starts to realize those things a little bit more. Sure. Um, to where that's how I try to look at almost everything anymore because most of these people are new and basic, you right. know, and they need that. But they're new and basic, and they also they want to maximize things, and there's so much information out there, oh, yeah. right? So much information yeah. that they start delving into topics that honestly probably don't shouldn't play a role in where they're at in archery. Putting the cart yeah. in front of the horse. Right? Oh, wait, yeah, hundred percent. Like their abilities don't yeah. match what <laughs> they're trying to do. They should still be gripping and ripping. Yeah. Gripping and ripping, dude. Yeah. Well yeah, or working yeah. on their shot. I think that's something that um we get and this is hard for us because we're in the business of selling people products, right? But we're also selling archery as a sport, right? And trying to grow yeah. it. Yeah. Um so it's this this happy medium of trying to explain to somebody, especially in store, like, yeah, you can you can drop all this money, but if your abilities don't, you know, stack up, you're not necessarily gonna get so much better performance out of this bow yeah. than this bow. For sure. Um, because you haven't put the time behind the string to oh, of course to see it. So. Yeah, you can't. You, you'd be way better off to spend money on a lesson than you ever would be on gear. Yeah, 
focus on how to shoot a bow better than what piece of equipment is going to actually help sure. you shoot better. But at the at the same time, you know, people we we are in an immediate gratification society. Oh yeah, right. So they want to throw some money at a problem and feel like it's solved. Yeah, and you know, in a perfect better world, archery through aggressive it, spending. Yeah, in a perfect yeah. world, you'd never you wouldn't shoot at a target for like two months and you'd start with a hinge and no sight. In yeah. a perfect world, amen. But who's gonna, <laughs> but, but who's going to do that? Like who what, who who's never if, done it before? Now hold on sure, a second, yeah. there, Tiger. Who've never done it before? And you want to have you're you're getting into a hobby. Hobbies are supposed to be fun, yeah. right? I mean, who's going to start that way and enjoy it? Sure, and not just not want to do it. Yeah. And I've I've tried people that way a lot over the years, mm-hmm. and they make it about a week, and they're shooting at a target. Well, I put a target up. I couldn't help it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like well, I put my. You just, back you, just, you just broke it. You just yeah. broke the whole process. This is pointless. Here, here's a here's a here's a trigger. Go yep. slam the crap out of it for three years, get really fed up, and then we can learn how to do it right. Yeah. As much as I would love it to go the other way, that's very hard to get sure. somebody to do. And I, I think that's part of um, a person's journey through our tree, too. Yeah. Is sucking like bad. Gotta suck before like, you can get better. Okay. I need to get better. What what do I need to do? Mm-hmm. And it's it's that want from the individual to get better. And not your want for them to get better. That's going to push them, you know. Oh, for sure. To, but they, a, to a different level. They also have to want or want the right thing. Sure. Oh yeah. yeah. You can't. Your goal can't be to hit the middle of the target. Right. It never can be. Yeah. Shot you execution make over a good everything. Shot. Yeah. Hands down. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's got to be more important for yeah. you. And there's good to resources. make a good shot than hit the middle of the trigger. There's good resources the the out target. there for that. And you've. Oh yeah. You've. Uh, you've had your. Um, interactions with and kind of um a good relationship from my joel talking with you with joel yeah. oh yeah no like and if that, you want to that you, program has completely yeah. changed my shooting I've, well it's it's changed like everybody's if you want to get good at shooting a, a bow that and you don't have that you're an idiot yeah like he's he's nobody's better at that than him um even well, it, it works for me it, well it, right it, yeah but well, it works. no no so hold up <laughs> okay i work for it right i work for that system it's not just like a system that you um know about and learn of and mm-hmm. then it just automatically clicks with you You constantly like every single shot you have to work for it oh yeah and he he'll he'll talk about that in the course if you you know if you sign up for um, yeah buy his course but um that's definitely there's two ways of thinking about it right like you're a conscious aimer or you're a conscious executor yep one of the two no and I, i've i've listened to him a lot over the past two years and it's we would uh, disagree about small parts of it. Sure. Um, and the more time goes on, the more I think he's right over the things. That, I mean, I I would shoot almost everything exactly the same. Like the first time I sat and listened to him work through the whole process, right. it was like, yep, 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 yep. That part's different. Yep. Like everything was the same other than like one little part of it. I'm like, I mean, even my phrasing of what I say and, my, and his phrasing, what he said was super similar. But I'd never listened to what he had ever, you know, put out. Um, but focusing on the actual pull rather than the aim, yeah, because um, that's what I was always taught, and everything I'd read and everything I'd looked at, and it worked well for me because I could mentally focus past the fact that it was moving, sure, with my aim, and wouldn't pay attention to what I was aiming with. Yep. So much so that I'd take the dot or the pin out of the scope completely. Yeah, you just, did that with me. Yeah, like it's like the whole thing. There's nothing in there. You're like, how am I supposed to aim? Just look in the middle of the target. Yeah, it'll go in there, yeah. and it works. It is, but I remember his you, other. You took the the pin. Yeah, I was probably running a pin, uh, mm-hmm. a pin, and my lens out of my target scope, mm-hmm. and just said, "Just anchor and look at what you want to hit and shoot." And it works was it surprising like how close to the center you'd actually oh, hit insane yeah 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 because yeah. you're what not, your brain yeah, does as far as you know well you're aiming associating at t- you're aiming at tim right now you're aiming at me right now yeah yeah you don't eyes you don't it. need to aim you know how right exactly <laughs> right yeah so why are you thinking about it and that's when it clicked when he was like you don't need to i'm like god damn it he's right i gotta stop thinking of aiming <laughs> I do. He's right. He, yeah. he is. Because, I mean, you don't need to do that. You're going to do it without thinking about it. Get it done. Yeah. I got to yeah. tell you a quick story about something like that. Um, in college, we had this guy come to – so my profession is a golf instructor. Mm-hmm. And for the people listening, 
I that's what I do all day. But in college, we had this golf instructor come to present to us, and he wasn't there really talking to us about X's and O's. He was talking about learning and learning styles and how people learn. And uh, he would take a complete beginner, and what he would do is, hey, beginner, I want you to putt to the edge of the screen. And he would say, okay, take a second, look at the edge of the green, and just process where that is. And then he would have them close their eyes. He would say, okay, putt one ball, putt another ball, putt another ball. And all three of those balls from like 40 feet with a beginner would be within like a foot or two feet of the color of the green. Because people subconsciously understand, your eyes understand those things. They understand what you're looking at and what your depth perception is. You're not just going to walk into a wall, right? People don't right. do that. Yeah. Because you, you understand those frames of references. And to me, that's the parallel with archery is like, you just have to trust that your eyes know it's there and mm -hmm. not get in the way of that yeah. yeah yeah very much so it's interesting though right but it's it's a weird yeah. mind trick kind of yeah. to really like accept it and to understand it and yeah. yeah i was shooting a hoop there for a little bit before i went to the just nothing in the lens what does shooting a hoop mean a circle like a little circle on see, your lens so it. you can see through it and okay. see the middle of the target but my brain kept wanting to line it up really badly oh yeah like horribly badly and, you, and your brain would keep thinking about the fact that it wasn't lined up instead of just keeping your thought in the right spot. Um, and so I one day I just got pissed off and I took it out and I couldn't miss. <laughs> like it, they'd all go right in the middle. Right. And I, it didn't even look like it was lined up at all and boom, 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 right in the middle. I'm like, holy crap. Or your indoor stuff, like way, way back when, uh, yeah. you used to run nothing. Yeah, I'm talking about right, that. Like, no, I'm talking like, I thought you ran like a, 10 power i did i ran a 10 power scope lens with no mm -hmm. image on it before Nothing. that i was yeah. trying a hoop and i yeah. took it off okay okay but yeah like an inch and three eighths scope yeah. with no pin yeah oh, at all that's wild just look at the middle target yeah it goes in there and if you had enough magnification all i could really see was the yellow anyway <laughs> it was just so hope much. you're on the right target. I remember, yeah <laughs> oh man there were there were several times where you pull back and go oh whoops top bail there's, bottom a, there's bail an switch. arrow there that one's not mine <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you could, it was like, well, it's like basically the hoop. Yep. It was like, well, I'm in the yellow. Just look at the middle. Yep. It'll go in there. And it, it that really worked. Um, but if you're focusing on the the back end, after you line everything up, yeah, just stop doing that. Go back there. And Joel Turner's the man. He just, he just 100% is. I'm 1,000% convinced. And as we go forward in the plans in the future, I'm hoping to include him a lot. Cool. Yeah, he's a good dude. So you boys are headed to uh, Reading, mm -hmm. a couple mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. That dirty state called California. <laughs> <laughs> I got nice weather. <laughs> no, uh, it, did you look at the weather report for it? Have you uh, checked? Yeah, it's starting to look pretty crappy. Is yeah, of course. Like yeah. windy, rainy, but oh, it man. it could change. That's a ten day. So forecast. give people who want to know this. Give a quick breakdown of like the setup you're gonna bring, and then maybe like the core differences between the two setups. People don't know me from Adam, so they probably don't care what I'm shooting. You know, shooting, they want to know. Uh, yeah, what, what, what setup are you going to bring? So I'm shooting the Hoyt Stratos. Yep. Um, the 40 um, with a HBT cam. And um, like, do you want a whole breakdown? Of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run through it. Just uh, run through it. Excel Achieve XP with a... Um, what scope is that? The Excel AVX 31... Um, which I've got a uh, Elvish Tac light that projects onto um, a lens that I run a dot on. So I run a pretty generous size dot. Um, and then I have a small piece of fiber optic through that. Uh, it's a five power, oh, who makes that? Um, X Focus 365 uh, Acromat doublet lens. It's got a Hamsky Trinity rest, which beats the crap out of my hand. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> so I got to wear like uh, a Band-Aid over that when I shoot. Otherwise, the back of my rest hits it. And or how the about back of my uh, arrows and release? Uh, Black Eagle X Impacts uh, release. I shoot um, True Ball Goat. The Goat. Goat. Goat uh, for a goat. In a hinge. And then Conquest Bars. Uh, that's 
about it, isn't it? I think yeah, that covers you covered your it. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. How about Josh? Are you going to like build your bow a couple of days from now and like before you I still leave? I put a peep in it. <laughs> I've got like a week. Yeah. <laughs> I really need to shoot. Hey, I cut the arrows down the other day. I know. <laughs> I think I had said that in the last podcast. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. I'm so in trouble. Um, I'm You're shooting a shot. You can 10 power scope. I'm sh- I, I haven't even looked for a lens yet. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll probably shoot a six. I, I usually like that on But what's dots. the platform um, stuff? So I'll be shooting a. Uh, a Gen 2 Reckoning 39, isn't it 39? Is that what they call it? Yeah, I get the 38 and the 39 mixed up from the old one. Um, with a medium cam in the metallic y red black uh, color. Um, oh, yeah. I'll be shooting a Epsilon, not a Trinity, because I don't want to beat the crap out of my hand. And uh, I'm shooting an Achieve XP sight, uh, Ultra View scope. Yep. Um, with light getting a pin, and then I'll probably try to incorporate a lens into that. And then uh, I have Conquest Bars as well, and uh, Pro Comps, uh, yeah. Eastern Pro Comp Arrows. Pro comps. And I, awesome because of the short period of time, I will probably still shoot my Sigma because I'm used to it. I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, I wanted to play with the hinge. I wanted to play with a stand hinge. I just I didn't have time, um, largely because we've been cramming up podcasts, amongst <laughs> other things. Um, just, just didn't have enough time to do it. So unfortunately I, I didn't get to change that, but that's what I'll be running. And, um, I think the bet in the shop is that Justin will beat me. I don't think anybody's mm-hmm. bet on me yet. And what, what's on the wait, what's on the back end of your arrow for fletchings? Uh, the little, uh, two inch plastic match. How uh, many of them? Cut three. Justin, how many? Justin you got has in yours? three, two, doesn't he? In his target. <laughs> you have four in your target? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Four in your target, bow? I told yeah. him not to go here. He doesn't I can listen. See that very often. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't he doesn't listen very often to me. Well, that's the cool thing, is like there's more than one way to skin it up, right? Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. I watched some good shooters shoot four fletches. A lot of good shooters shoot four fletches. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. A lot no, of them do. They do. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Justin, he's a great shooter. He shoots yeah. four fletches. So what's the pros? What what do we like about it? What do I like about it? Yeah, what do we fletch? like about a four fletch? Um like from a hunting or a target perspective? From how arrows fly or whatever. What do you like how about arrows it? fly? Uh it's more steering on the back end. Which does that do better or worse in the wind? In the wind, it's gonna be a little more difficult. You got more surface area. A little more pull. Yeah. Didn't yeah. you say it's gonna be windy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I said. <laughs> Here's the jabs. Here's the jabs. Soft, I did, starting with soft it. jabs. Suck it. Suck it. Suck it. <laughs> starting with soft yeah, jabs. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I did shoot in the wind yesterday at my house at 40 and 50 with pretty stout wind, like sustained eight to, uh, let's say, like eight to 12 mile an hour winds, like 20 mile an hour gusts, just like checking my equipment in the wind. And I can see the arrow layover. Um, if I had a three fletch, I'd probably see the same thing. It might move a little less, but I bet you would move about twenty percent less. <laughs> Just a that's guess. A, that's a very good number. <laughs> um, but the benefits for me, the things I like about it, um, if I need to re-index an arrow um, because it's hanging outside of a group for whatever reason, um, I've got one additional spot to rotate to. Um, this is true. I, and if you had six fletches, you could have three additional <laughs> spots. <laughs> yes, but then I'd have weird... I'd, You'd have really weird... Yeah, 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 really weird don't paper take the bait. Don't take the bait. Justin, don't take the bait. A little chocolate starfish. <laughs> um, but so that that's one. Uh, in a hunting situation, I like that I can... I don't think I'd ever do it because I... I use the indexing point off my knock to load my arrow, yep. so I don't even have to look at it. Mm-hmm. But if for some reason I didn't in a hunting situation, I still have the same clearance. Um, honestly, I, I think it looks cool. That like there's, a, there's a cool factor yeah. to oh, it. Oh, I'm sure that's probably a large part uh, of why people do it. And I, I tend, and Josh could probably second this, I tend to try and do stuff that isn't what everybody else is doing. Yeah, the, uh, I do that well, too. But that's, you should look at my D-loop. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, Dave Cousins would be proud. I'm yeah. sure he would. Yeah, yeah the, my, my defiant children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. most, of, most of the boys that have been around me a long time tend to... Like try to go against the grain, and <laughs> they, just can't they almost it. always has nothing to do with They you. almost yeah. always find their way back. <laughs> I shot three fletch. I shot my bull two years ago with a tack vein. Three. Wow, fletch. and you hit him? Yeah, and he At died. 60, yes. How is that possible? 
<laughs> in the wind. Yeah. Oh, wow. I bet you it probably moved about 20% less in the wind. <laughs> but are you seeing with, with your broadheads, are you seeing a, a tighter groups with the four flats, you think? Um, that's that, a, that's that hard is to a say. very loaded question. Yeah, that's hard to say. It's okay. a very loaded question. Um, yeah. I, I personally have never done the side by side four fletch versus three fletch mm-hmm. um, stuff. But, and, and you'll talk to people that'll, and I know you've talked to me, or, or Josh has mentioned that you guys shot uh, three fletch and four fletch at distance and saw some, some differences in impact. Um, some. And obviously, right, generous. A lot. That's a pretty extreme day, though, too. It, sure. You know, like a 8 to 12 mile an hour crosswind. But if all you had was four fletches right in your quiver, yeah. you, you wouldn't, wouldn't have You don't know otherwise. Right. And your sight you tape's built known. for that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you just have to commit to whatever it is. And that's just, that's my personal choice on what I've chosen to do. Um, I don't down anybody for shooting three fletch. Yeah. I shoot three fletch indoor, you know, big feathers, um, lots of helical to get it stabilized in that short period of time. And then for for me in, in a hunting situation too, I'm 60 is probably max I'm going to shoot. So I'm not going to see some of that weird sight tape stuff that you're going to get further out. Um, with the Yeah, drag, drag takes a lot more yeah. of an effect the farther you yeah. get past 60. So yeah. if you're not, yeah, no different than if you're shooting 20 yards, why not shoot an 800 green arrow? Uh, well, but really, like what it, what are you losing? Like if you're not if distance is no longer a factor, then the speed is no longer relevant. Yeah, if you had very strict parameters in which you're gonna yeah. hunt in, right? Like, you know, hogs at twenty yards. Yeah. Yeah. Go, Go for it. But outside of that, it yeah. starts to matter. It's quiet. It is. Uh it's gonna be it is. I'm actually anxious to see how much noise or vibration difference there is as you put heavier arrows in a bow. Because it's pretty substantial. It's audibly different. It, it is, and I'd like to know by yeah. what number. Sure. Actually, put a statistical number on it, which yeah. that How many vibration thingy that I bought should do that. Decibels. Right? Decibels yeah. is sound. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but the decibel meter thing I I bought isn't. It's like it's not got a great enough variance in it to really effectively tell very much. So I, I got to look into see if there's like higher quality equipment for testing that. Yeah, we could but use any, any camera where you set the camera and the target a similar spot away, as long as. We don't blow out the audio because you'll see where the top of the audio and then you'll see the top of the next audio yep. and then it, there's your difference. And I'm not sure if a decibel sliding scale is exactly like a one to one to one as it moves or if there's more percentages. I'd love something that had scale. a functional readout as it happened. That would be really cool. Yeah. Um, and I'm there's sure definitely there's stuff for that. Yeah. We'll buy some. Yeah. The comments will tell us. Spend, spend some of my more money for me, please. <laughs> Yeah. Help them spend some money. Yeah, it's we're, we're up to like three thousand in the last month of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> just keep buying stuff. <laughs> yeah, which is one of the great things to get into this point. You know, you've got enough, you've got enough like ad revenue coming in, which is not a lot, but it's like okay, well, I can at least justify spending that. Well, at least you like, see, like, hey, this stuff actually does come back some. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you get a return, you get a response, and it helps fuel the the desire to do more. Yeah. Instead of just kind of limping along the way you have been. You well, know, that's the hard thing about being it. someone who's starting up with a YouTube channel, too, is like you have to have the belief in yourself that like one day it will be a thing because yeah. a lot of what you're doing in the beginning isn't a thing until it all of a sudden starts to become one. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. There's a, there's a massive commitment of effort, time, and energy with yeah. no return. Yeah. At all. You, do, you, don't, you don't start that with the intent of like it being a, a wealth. No, I always tell thing. people, it's like, passion. yeah, do you it better for love passion. It. In which I, I started mine because I authentically wanted to help people. Yeah. Tim started with where he was at because he authentically wanted to learn. Yeah. He wanted to understand how it worked. He was and, really well, and curious. I just like making videos. I always have. Yeah. 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 But you're very, you're very intrigued in the process. Yeah. yeah. And so, it, once again, it was a passion or a labor of love. It wasn't a money thing. Yeah. Totally, yeah. And, and that shows those, through. Those shows through 100%. Yep. Like, if, what's your purpose? Yeah. You know? Yeah. The internet will sniff out fake pretty damn quick. It's pretty pros amazing. and cons of the internet, but that's one of the thing they're really good at. Yeah, really. Yeah, good they'll at, sniff really out the at. bad, yeah. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I keep going back to three flesh, four flesh. Oh like yeah, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Stop. Move on. Move on. I've got like a, I've got like this whole list of arguments in my but head. You gotta, I'm like, give, no. you gotta give your little bullet point why you like three flesh. I mean, some people have heard it, but there's a lot of people who haven't. Okay, so your what were your points of why you shot a four flesh? Said stability, the ability to tune your arrow more which basically means you didn't mic check it or shaft tune it before you fletched it and you just want the ability to change it if one doesn't work out right right 
Right, and that could be <clears throat> just for the people sure. listening, yeah, right? For sure, it might be a little advanced. Yeah. And then the cool factor, the cool sure. factor, and the cool factor. Me. Fuck cool. Yeah, fuck cool. <laughs> I'm all about function. Excuse my language. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Your mom, <laughs> your mom will be glad when she listens to that. <laughs> Look at my proper boy. My mom's like, oh, I'm just gonna ignore what he's saying. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, the um, she doesn't want you to. The whole uh, she actually does listen to these. Oh, your mom? Yeah. No, I was talking about mom. Oh, yeah. No, she might. She knows her son's on something. Right, I'll yeah. send it to her. I'd have to tell her. I'll send it to her. Yeah, um, for uh, what is your I movie? struggle with the reality that when you have four fletches versus three fletches, it to me it's more a, a concept of twisting the fletch a little more and maybe shooting a slightly longer fletch than the the four that you're shooting, and it ends up weighing less with equivalent or better stability, in my opinion. And yeah. that's why I always disagree with the four fletch thing. Is like there's a better way to make a Whatever you're trying to accomplish here, like if you're shooting a, a four fletch with two inches, three fletch with two point six with a harder helical will stabilize better and it weighs less. Right. In my opinion. Yeah. So I don't I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me unless you're in the market of selling veins or cool factor. Yeah. Well, there's that whole Which while you're at thing. you might as well put a wrap on there too while you're Ugh. at Do you put wrap on yours? No. Uh-huh. No. Yeah. Well, they're so cool though. <laughs> no. <laughs> No. Yeah. So what were you saying? Oh, I was saying there's the whole confidence <clears throat> thing, which, you know, for some people does matter. Like, if they like what they're looking at. They believe in it. Uh, there's something to that, for sure. Not really quantifiable or whatever, but... Sure. Yeah. Well, believing in your gear is everything, and it doesn't matter if it works right or not if you believe in it. Yeah. If you believe in it, it's yeah. adequate. Confidence is... I good. mean, I know you've, you've like, seen some high-level bows from competitions that uh-huh. weren't exactly tuned or... Jacked. Those kind of things. Yeah. Don't matter so, where the field point. Don't matter where the field point. <laughs> yeah. It really does. a different deal. Yeah. Broad yeah. He- getting broadheads to shoot effectively at distance is a whole nother animal. And that's one thing that I have spent an immense amount of time doing over the years. It's kind of like the great equalizer, right? It is. Yeah. It is. It, which is why I gravitate to the things I gravitate to because, like what you're saying, you're not going to shoot past 60. I'm tuning that crap out to 150 yards. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to shoot that far, but. I am tuning those functional things that far. Yeah, we got a show going on here, King of the Mountain. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I, I'm testing it out to that far, and it always works out. Sure. So that's why I tend to gravitate that. Way. I so I'm always uncertain where I'm going to end up for my hunting bow for the year. But on the arrow, I'm pretty well decided. I even have not even shot it yet, but just looking at it. I'm probably going to shoot a three fletch and it's probably oh. going to be oh. that. It's not um, even my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that DCA. Yeah. Thing. The oh, yeah. Super Saber. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That one's real intriguing. I haven't played with them yet. I want to play with that one a little bit. I, I think it's going to shoot better at distance. Yeah. I feel like uh, some of the best I've ever shot with the broadhead was with the A Max Hunter, but it was just loud. Yeah. And this yeah, is. Yeah, really loud. This is similar, but but not. Uh, and I agree. they're extremely quiet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, very I'm very intrigued to get a broadhead on the front of one of those and shoot it. I'm just Lee, Liam's shooting that on his yeah. airstrike and it's quiet. Yeah, I want to uh I just want Mark to hurry up and get my fletching jig because I want to fletch it with that. hundred percent. But yeah, that's all high on my list of mm-hmm. ones to play with. And he's he's working on shorter ones of those. For like target. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and their claim, I th- I want to say they claim less drop over the same weight and shape. Like less DCAs? drag, but, yeah, less drag with more stability, is what they claim. So yeah. I'm really intrigued to see what that does. I think tax is the same thing because of the stiffness of the vein. And yeah, it's they're stiff not, in certain spots on that DCA vein. Yeah, the, well, they're not basing it off as of stiff though; they're basing it off of the diameter shape oh. of it, if I remember right. Yeah, he, I talked to the guy who owned the company. Yeah. before I ordered him, and yeah. he was really adamant about that process. And he was, he said, "Oh, I'm working on smaller ones." He's like, he cut them with a pair of scissors. Oh, really? <laughs> like, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I try to remember who he was uh, sending them to. Um, was a name you'd recognize, but I, sure. I, I draw a blank at the moment. But yeah, yeah he's working on a, more of a target version of it. Cool. But yeah, that that company is small, small. Like, sure. there, I tried to get like thousand piece pricing, and he's like, uh, uh, "I like get these from the molder twenty minutes away from me." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like, drive my car, go pick up veins, and come back and package them up myself and send them out. So that's cool. Yeah, I don't have that kind of price structure yet, but I, I will at some point. Yeah, that vein's very intriguing. Huh. Yeah. I think it yeah. I think it has a cool place in in the vein uh category just because um 
that's one thing that a lot of that higher profile vein, a lot of the high profile vein options don't allow for is, is quiet. Some of them are close, but that yeah. from, from my experience and what I've heard, that thing is. I hadn't heard that. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Super quiet. Yeah. Cause nice I noticed how stuff. wide they were. Yeah. And uh, at the end, you know, they're wide. Mm -hmm. So that'll steer something, right? I want to try to but find I didn't, three. I didn't know what the difference was in sound, but it's cool to hear what, what I want to try to find three of similar size and weight sure. and build up three arrows of each one and shoot them like 100 and see if that actually truly does hit higher with less. Well, that just means it's more aerodynamic right. with the same twist on them. Right, right. And I, I think it will. I, I, I believe the guy. I think he sounded very, uh, very believable when I talked to him. So... That, that'll be a fun one to try. So that's funny. It's on both of our lists. Huh. Yeah. You guys agree on something. We agree on a lot. You guys can be friends. <laughs> We're good friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, Justin's my boy. I know he is. Yes. Uh, Justin, should you tune the bow to the arrow or the arrow to the bow? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, our uh, our bows can do it all now. So um, as long as you're paying attention to... Um, the spine. Spine, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. spine charts and staying within reason on your components up front um you shouldn't get in too much trouble but bows nowadays can do all of it so especially bowtech which josh is shooting it's the most tunable system out there ever for sure yeah, yeah it's pretty and incredible you can you can work around um certain deficiencies as a shooter with some of these systems that uh, in a really quick fashion, uh, that one especially. Yeah. That uh, you just couldn't do before, or there was, um, there was systems and approaches to it that weren't quite as effective. You know, yokes uh, versus yep. what we have now. Um, yokes are awesome because you can you can fine tune timing and and wheeling and broadhead tune with them, but you have to have a press number one. Uh, and then you got to have a reliable string cable set that isn't going to move on you. Uh, otherwise, that stuff shifts where, like, the Bowtech system just, it doesn't. Yeah, I've tuned my bow twice. And oh, yeah, you know how many, you know how many times it's been in the press? Never. Yeah. <laughs> Zero. Yeah, time lock, <laughs> deadlock drive. Yeah, all, all I didn't even things. have to call Josh. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty simple. I was able to pester these guys cool. and, you know, crack, crack a nut and screw it over. And, yeah, I mean, with some basic principles you can really do enough to be dangerous pretty quickly it's hard to argue with their system if you want to play with it yourself like if you're a do-it-yourself kind of guy which is what i'm trying to encourage well do you like um, to play with it yourself uh do you also like well, to play I, I with like, it I like yourself to play with others a lot that's fun <laughs> 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 but uh but yeah I, I want i want people to be able to work on their own stuff so the more User friendly a bow is more. I'm probably going to promote it. Yeah, um, elites are relatively user friendly. PSE's new system is really mm -hmm. user friendly, um, and I like all that stuff. And the more user friendly a bow company is going to be, the more I'm personally willing to promote that company. Sure, because um, I want everyone to work on their own stuff. It's the only way everyone's going to get better, even if it's scary, even if it's intimidating. It's not that difficult. And along the way, I'm going to do everything within my power to give you enough information to make it less scary. Sure. Because that's how you get better. Yep. Working on your own bow is how you understood it, yep. right? And you just happened to learn in a shop, but it, like, sparked your brain in a whole other direction. And now you do all this crazy crap that I go, ah, it's not going to work. <laughs> but you play it anyway, and sometimes it does. You know, every once in a while, you might uh, surprise me. And that's good. But, yep. uh, but yeah, your, your development has been... Um, has been quite incredible, actually. I oh, um, You were one that I thought would probably stick with it forever. You know, you you get a feeling two years in with somebody of you know, how's this wearing on them? Are they really still intrigued? Do they still really have a passion and a fire? Oh yeah. You know, for that. And I always kind of thought you would stick with it forever, even though you talked about having different plans. I thought you would. Yeah. So and so far, you're still doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Plan on it. <laughs> yeah. Based in the future. Yeah. In an industry that's Documented. that's not easy, right? Like this is a very difficult industry yeah. financially. I mean, it's like it, it'd be really neat to know how many real functioning, not just I have a bow shop, right? How many real functioning archery shops there are in the United States that are truly making money? Not like a lot of money, just like not living month to month in their function. Like they've got sure. like six months of a cushion. How many of them are there? If you had to guess, I have no clue. 
Like per state? Total. So just times it by 50? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say like actual profiting shops like within real, a state. Like real profiting shops. Back east, that's hard to say. Yeah. But yeah, that's a archery's a little different back there from what I understand. But I don't know. Not many. It's a labor of love for a lot of people, right? Like it, most people aren't doing it for a financial gain. In yeah, fact, probably yeah. little to nobody is. Yeah. Yeah. And the people that may look like they have a really successful shop, it's probably because it's a labor of love and they're not making much at all. Well, I mean, I I know our level of success and I know how much I make. And it's not well, a that was a partially well, there's a lot of things that go into that, but yeah. Willing to risk the biscuit by putting it yeah, you know, online or going the online route, which is a lot of how the everything is going, but especially the archery industry. That kind of makes me want to back up since you mentioned that. The Do you remember when I first started this and how you felt about it? Um Yeah. And I've I was actually there when all yeah. that started. But yeah, started. um it's been there's been growing pains in there, but it's ultimately because you committed to doing that and you you there's so much to it i I won't get into all of it but the uh the willingness to try something um that might be coming in the future and obviously has come in the future has has paid off big time Mm -hmm. and uh that that has helped grow the shop and then as the shop grows the online stuff grows it's just this you know awesome wicked circle of you know archery Mm -hmm. Initially, yeah, I thought that most was, everybody thought was a terrible yeah, idea. That I was what I was, was trying little, to get at. Really, a little. Oh risky. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like he he thought it was a bad idea. Brian thought it was a bad idea. Uh, Stacy, who was hanging out a lot, thought it was a terrible idea. Like I remember, he, I think he came up to me last year and he said, "I just got to tell you, you were right and I was wrong, and I was way wrong." But um, but yeah, I had a lot of like, I don't know why I did it because I had a lot of people telling me not to. Like, it's like, this is not going to work. You're going to lose your ass. Like, people that I respected, people that I, like, elder people, not just, you know, the guys that I was hanging around with, but, like, shops that I knew that had been doing it a lot longer than me. Like, you're going to you're gonna lose your ass. There's a shop in... What um, was the risk, though? Investing in... in, in well, because you're... Investing in inventory? It's, it's, it's The margin's lower. You're going right. to make less money on your dollar. Yeah. Right? So... It's quantity-based. It's, it's going to require... It's quantity-based business. And um, my dad even had... A saying, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was about a, a farmer that sold his, grew his hay for a dollar and sold it for a dollar and sold a bazillion of them and he went broke. Can't <laughs> yeah. remember the phrase of it, but like, if you're not if you're not putting enough profit into what you're doing, and he was very very profit driven, profit driven, yes. margin driven. Like you know what a margin is, cousin Mark Jones. We sell I mean, margin calculators. We, they're around here somewhere. The little yeah, the little wheels. Well, I can tell you yeah. what it is in my head yeah. now because I did it so much, but. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, yeah, like like everywhere I turned, I was being told, "Don't do it." Like, um, uh, guy who owns Archers of Field, Jim Nealon, uh, yeah. really respect him for a long time. Um, older guy uh, <laughs> has a laugh like a little weasel. Always made me laugh. He's just funny as all get. I always talk to him at the trade shows and whatnot. And I told him what I was doing, and he's like, "You're an idiot. You're gonna lose your ass, and we're gonna talk about you in the future. Like, you're this is a bad decision." And um, you know, I've respected his opinion a lot, and I still, I still said, "No, you're wrong." And I, and it's going to go this way whether you like it or not, and whether you think it's right or not. And you can either be first to the party, and be prepared for it, or you can have whatever you have at the end of it. Yeah. Um, and I like I still in my brain I just some it made sense to me for some reason when it made sense to like nobody else. Yeah. I think it was well what calculated and you had the people to or the the manufacturers initially to help get you rolling in that direction. Yeah. Um so I mean I had um I had a good amount of credit with them. So being able to buy larger quantities of stuff because of sure. my business history good standing uh, wasn't as it. wasn't as scary, but all that stuff, like oh, what I when I first started doing it was all like closeouts. Yep. Right. They don't Last give you terms. They don't give you most of them wouldn't give you terms. Yep. Like it was like you got thirty days. And I remember when I bought those first um, carbon nights. Nights. Yeah, carbon nights. Put that thing together in you, my sleep. You can dude. put that thing together. So <laughs> pop, 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 right? Seriously. Um, right, and I bought a, I bought a hundred of them, a hundred bows that were, 
I think we were selling them for five fifty at the time. They originally sold for like seven fifty. It was a closeout, right? And it was that was a chunk of change for me. I mean, at that time we had like maybe two hundred thousand in inventory total, and I just bought a hundred bows at like four hundred dollars. I just spent forty grand. I just spent twenty percent of my inventory budget on something I had to pay for in thirty days. Damn. And I got them. And I stacked them up, and I organized them in the range on the one side, and I got done, and I looked at it, and the first thought that popped in my head is, I just went broke. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thought that popped in my head, and I, I mentally, I never, I never talked to anybody about it, but I started to panic. I was like, what the fuck did you just do? And then I, and then I worked really hard, really hard to get everything up yeah, and going, and quick, as quick as I could, like heavily motivated, and, and it was all gone in like 18 days, I'm like, Oh man, maybe there's something to this. Yeah. And then that steamrolled and steamrolled and steamrolled into like at one point I was the largest elite dealer in the country and every I didn't buy a single current production bow. It was all closeouts. Uh I had I got an award from Bear one year because I bought all their crap. Right. Like it was whoever was getting rid of stuff. Um, I bought all their stuff. I bought Matthews, God, I what one year I bought like six hundred Matthews bows. It was all their late model stuff. I bought Hoyt's late model stuff. Everybody's because they didn't require a, they let you sell it online. So and it was low margin, but I mean you still sold a lot of it. Right. So and then COVID came along and I had a building full of product where most shops didn't and you couldn't get anything. Yep. And so that worked out really well. Like all the closeout sure. stuff was gone, and then it was like. Well, I can't get closeout stuff, so let's start focusing on real inline current production stuff and just go nuts because we've got the capital because I don't take the money out of it. Like, I still live on the same amount of money I lived on 15 years ago. I just keep living on it and put it all back in the business until we, until I go to Justin and go, what do we need to buy? And he goes, nothing. We have everything I can think of. Everything. And I'm like, all right, well... We, what, let's find something to spend money on then for fun. Then Josh will call me and say, do I need a camera? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll have bought like 17 by then. So <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I no doubt. Camera? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that one. Mm-hmm. A high speed yeah. Uh, yeah. set prop? <laughs> yeah, something. But uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, I still look back on it and go, why'd you do that? I don't know. What something. year was it? What year did the online thing start? Because uh, you started with eBay, right? Yeah, well, I was always so I, I was selling on eBay in the '90s to get rid of old bows. Whose idea was that? Mine. Okay. Because I had I had found some stuff on there once, and then just started looking a little bit and going, "Oh, well, there's some archery stuff on here." And what we had was when we closed Outdoor Sportsman, we had like my dad would progressively mark down every department in the store, but he refused to mark down archery. Like he marked down archery ten percent, and then that was it. Because he was coming to an archery shop. So he's like, I'll be able to sell it. I don't need to mark that down. And he kept dual cam bows, which at this time, it was like late 90s, right? Dual cams were dead. Like, they don't exist. Nobody wants them. Everybody wants a single cam bow. And you couldn't hardly give them away. And he wouldn't mark them down. Mm -hmm. Well, then we sat on them for like two years. And he's like, we really have to get rid of this inventory. And so I started looking around. Like, where can I sell these things? And I found eBay. Yep. And I had bought some stuff on eBay before, and I'd sold a thing or two, like, personally, like, privately. Um, and I went, well, screw it. I'll just put them on eBay. And I offloaded every single bow. It took me over a year. Offloaded every bow on eBay. And so I've always had an eBay account. Hmm. Um, and we've, uh, you know, we'd, we'd sell current production stuff on there once in a while. But eBay was never a really great marketplace for current production stuff because it's like, it's kind of like a swap meet. It's like where people right. go for a deal. yeah. 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 Right. Well, 100%. and all the closeout bows that I sold, that's where I sold them. I didn't sell them on my own website. And then um, we ended up in a uh, in a hindrance of drop shipping. <clears throat> and I think it was around during COVID times because we sold a lot of bow presses just drop shipping them like 20 other people in the country. Right. There were several different places you could buy a bow press from. Well, they're actually shipping it from last chance and shipping it to you, right. but there's a delay. And when we got into COVID, the demand for bow presses went way up. So the lead times got longer, and I didn't know it at the time, but eBay doesn't like drop shipping. It doesn't say in there anywhere that you can't do that, but they didn't like it, and my account got locked for 30 days. And I and it wouldn't tell you why. Mm. They said, make sure you fulfill everything on there and upload everything and et cetera, et cetera. Everything's still there, but you can't buy anything. And so it was like, oh, my God. Cash flow was immediately gone. 
30 days were. So uh, Forrest was working there at the time. And yep. me, Doug, and Forrest spent 30 days straight building our website that we currently have now, uploading every single item, every single transaction, trying to figure out how to do Google ad leads so you sure. can get some attention, right? Something you have more control and over. And then realized it would take more than 30 days to get your ad leads working. So we never really you know, got that back, but um, it forced us to look at it. And once again, that was one of the greatest backhanded surprises Blessings, that we could yeah. get, right? Um, that it forced us to work on our website. And now the majority of everything we sell is on our website instead of third-party yeah. market. And we make more money because we don't pay for yep. ads and things like that. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's good. Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's a wrap, dude. That fire's out. It's getting getting down there. Yeah, for sure. See how that works? <laughs> yeah. So, Justin, how many subscribers we got to get to? For what? For, for podcast? For this yeah. new oh, podcast you guys YouTube channel? 5,000. 5,000, yeah. baby. Yeah. 5,000. We need you to subscribe. Please. Please. And as soon as we get there, we'll drop that, uh, our first together. Official. We're together. On the new channel, and it won't be on my channel anymore. Yeah, it's going to be its own thing. Boom, boom. Pretty cool. And it'll come to the audio platforms. All that stuff will be linked down in the description. Uh, Podymarcher.com. Yeah. That's that's you? That's me. That's him? That's him. Part yeah. of it, yeah. Call yeah. the pro shop. He'll answer the phone. <laughs> They're <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. Good, good possibility. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, guys, we'll catch you back for the next one. Thanks a lot. Justin? Wasn't too bad. No fly fishing. Oh, yeah, we didn't even get there. <laughs>